Hi, my name is Skylar Barker. I did my presentation on the book Nobody Left to Hate, Teaching Compassion After Columbine. So first, a little bit about the author. His name is Elliot Aronson. He is an American social psychologist recognized for his invention of the jigsaw classroom and his experiments in cognitive dissonance. I thought this quote of his from the chapter on humans as the social animals was relevant to our class. He says, people who do crazy things are not necessarily crazy. He calls this Aronson's first law. Aronson says, situational factors are important when looking at bizarre behavior. Aronson is the only person to have ever won all three of the APA's major awards. So for a little bit of background information, what happened, what happened at Columbine? It was April 20th, 1999 in Littleton, Colorado at Columbine High School. Two students opened fire, killing 12 students, one teacher, and then themselves. In the meantime, they wounded 23 others, not to mention all of those left with mental scars. These shooters filmed videos of themselves preparing for that day. They planted 95 explosives, which had failed to detonate. Had everything gone as they planned, the two calculated that 250 people would have died. Aronson's purpose in Nobody Left to Hate is to educate the public, specifically teachers, parents, and students. He says that school shootings cannot be explained by simply saying it was a violent act carried out by deranged individuals. Aronson's main core concept is that the social environment of most high schools is to blame. And I thought this cover from Time Magazine was relevant to our class, calling the school shooters monsters. Aronson says that the desire to place blame is understandable, that there is a distinction between condemnation and blaming aimed at finding the cause of the disaster so that we can intervene and prevent future disasters like this one. Aronson discusses the social climate of high school where bullying, teasing, humiliation, physical abuse, and social isolation occur frequently. School shooters are commonly those who experience these torments in high school. Aronson says that adults are often implicit in these situations. An unanswered question I have about Nobody Left to Hate is that um, Aronson focuses a lot on not pointing fingers at those who carry out these violent acts, but I believe there is a middle ground that we could find where we can blame these individuals while still looking for a long-term solution. To be clear, torment does not justify murder. It doesn't justify all of those lives lost at Columbine. It doesn't justify any lives lost to evil acts like those carried out by the shooters at Columbine. But the hostile and intolerant environment of most high schools is a major root cause of many school shootings, says Aronson. Aronson suggests unpopular kids be taught social skills and popular kids be taught tolerance. He also suggests that his jigsaw cooperative teaching method is a good way to work towards this end goal of tolerance. We have all probably done this without knowing we've done it. Um, the jigsaw teaching method basically is where the class is divided into groups. Each student is assigned a topic and must learn about that topic independently and then must share what they found with the group. Then everyone in the group is tested on all of the subjects. So the information you learn from each group member is vital to your own success. The end goal is to shift from hostility to tolerance, where outsiders feel included and insiders are more accepting of those who are different from themselves. Reading Nobody Left to Hate taught me the importance of tolerance. I already knew how important it was to be tolerant of those around me, but it really reinstilled just how much it means for someone to just go out of their comfort zone and speak to someone that you normally would avoid. Simply changing who you hang out with, like in Aronson's jigsaw method, talking to someone new can change things for the better. Nobody Left to Hate was not only about the Columbine Massacre, and Aronson wants to repeat that. He says, my aim was not simply to try to prevent pathological losers from killing their fellow students. Rather, it was to suggest ways to transform the atmosphere of our school so that there would be no losers, so there would be no one left to hate. 
So my takeaways from Nobody Left to Hate, I want to remember to practice tolerance every day in my own life. If we all practice tolerance, future tragedies like Columbine can be prevented. I also want to remember the lives of all the students that died too young at Columbine. And I want to remember the 187,000 students have experienced a school shooting resulting in deaths since Columbine. And here's my reference. Thank you all for listening.